We did go ahead and reorder uh, these broken parts. We couldn't find the pieces in there, so they were obviously damaged from before. But so we could continue on with our lesson, we're going to go ahead and do that. The other thing that you would do is make sure and use the right type of two-stroke oil that you would lubricate these parts up. And for us, once again, we're just practicing the idea of just oiling. But we would want to use the right uh, two-stroke oil to assemble that. So. You can see here that uh, we've got it quite a bit cleaner. Uh, for purposes of a customer's, we would go ahead and even clean this with some more chemical products to get it good. One note to make, anytime we're inserting into threaded holes that we've had in a parts washer, that we've had any type of cleaner agents on, what do we need to do to those holes? Yeah, we need to thoroughly dry those, th you know, dry those out and then even use a carb cleaner, brake cleaner, get spotless clean. And the part that people miss is they also forget that you got to do the same thing to the bolts. Does that make sense? They got to be spotless clean. And then if it says apply a Loctite or a locking agent, then put it on when it's completely dry. Otherwise, it will not cure. It'll defeat the purpose. So if these are allowed to come loose in here, it's going to wedge that valve and you're, you're going to have a problem. So make sure that you guys do that as well. All right, let's go ahead and start uh, getting our top power valve in here, that direction. So you're upside down, I think, aren't you? Go ahead and flip it. I'll walk you through it. The shaft was on top. Close those up. Oil. And just a real light amount of oil, then what you're going to do is just, that's good, that's enough right there. You're going to take and lube up all these parts, especially kind of separate these like so. And get the oil on there as well. Doesn't take a lot, but we definitely need to get a decent film on there. All right, that's good. Set that on and go ahead and just slide her down the hole. And there's no adjustment in here. You just, uh, you'll find that spot. It shouldn't take any hammering or any tools. It'll just slip right in. There you go. So once you find that sweet spot, it, you could probably do it 10 times over. It'd be simple enough here. So. Before we mess with anything else, let's go ahead and get our two uh, screws in here. So these, uh, does it ask for a locking agent? Kawasaki does a pretty good job in the beginning of each chapter, this is that manual usage part, of showing everything in that top end. So what you're gonna notice here, let's get this where you can focus in. I'm gonna save our page here. This is a great way to cheat once you, once you know what you're doing. Would you guys agree these are the fasteners right here? Yeah. Okay, so if I look at that, it says T8, okay? When I look at this one above, I got T11, and then I have an L next to it, okay? So when we look at our legend, they have the, the torque chart of this right here. Switch pages here. Here's our legend. L says apply a, a non-permanent locking agent, but on those bolts that are holding in the power valve, it just says we're simply going to torque them to 48 inch pounds. Okay, no Loctite. That one does. So we're going to want to use both of these. So we'll kind of just say that. Do you see how fast that was for me to, to go grab the information rather than reading through the individual notes? So you guys go ahead and uh, get those bolts threaded in with the washer and I'll get a torque wrench set up for you. Now they're just going to kiss those really nice and even, right? Yep. So how many steps do I have to, now I said, I used the word half, to torque this? Three. Have to. One. One step. If they tell us one step, that's all we have to do. Okay, the kissing is going to be our first step in this application. That's good. That's just kissing. Just kiss both. Perfect. Here's a good rule of thumb. Take the socket and I'll let you torque it. Good rule of thumb on if you're low and sure on kissing. If you have to readjust your hand on this wrench to get more leverage, you're, you're torquing. Okay? Kissing means you just basically walk it up and touch it. It's already set. Yep. Slow movements. Perfect. Small fasteners, 48 inch pounds, the easy to strip? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so now that we've done this, it's a good idea too to still just make sure that we can function. If we want, we can look down in the cylinder too, and I can see 
that everything's moving free and opening. So not only am I unblocking the hole, that top one is being pulled fully open and I'm not obstructing. Good? Yep. All right, notice how much better that works, guys? Yeah. It's just really nice and free now. Okay, so what do we need to do next? We're gonna go ahead and grab it. And don't forget to lube it up a little bit. Okay, it's this way, yeah. like that, okay? Just pull that guy out. You don't have to worry about it coming out now, and then just you're gonna basically hinge that in and just kind of set it back down in there. Yep. You'll do the fine adjustment of it once you get your shaft through. So lube this guy up. Just a little bit. So this one here, there's a slot on one side and then it's solid on the other. So we're having a little problem with our manual is really of a different design where what this, what happens on the manual we have is that this gear is removable and there's a nut on here. So trying to kind of reverse engineer this here, we see that on the side of this, once we go to assemble this, you're gonna see this little, little slash here. And we paid attention here when we took it apart and you'll notice here there's a little dot. It was a little hard to see in the disassembly. Can you see how those are lined up now? Yeah. And what that's going to do is allow us the correct amount of travel for that rack and pinion. So you'll see how that comes together here in a second, but that's our intent. For us, we got to go a little bit outside the manual and you got to install this one first. Go ahead. All right, then what he's going to do is he's going to flip this up on end. And let's see if we can't even go a little bit more. Just hold it right there, can you? So how about we work together on this? And we'll grab this one. Lou? Good catch. About, I got ahead of myself, didn't I? Okay, I'm not going in the threads because what are we putting in those threads? Loctite. On this one, we're doing a little Loctite, okay? So I'm going to intentionally look for my alignment dot. I'm going to put it up. And am I uh, looking good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just going to set it in here and then we'll see if we're aligned. Okay. So right now we are, we're not aligned, are we? So we can go ahead and move this out a little bit. I'm going to pull this gear out, rotate it over. And try and grab on to there's our line okay lost my guy I think right there how's that look okay so nice the camera shows a, a good shot of that so let's flip the cylinder on its end then and we realize our next thing is is we're gonna line up this hole I'm gonna get a dab of Loctite. Get your screw. Is your screw good and clean? These Loctite bi uh, bottles uh, clog up on you. The thing you can do is uh, just push it through. The only thing you gotta be careful of now, I always recommend to wipe the Loctite off, is that hole has obviously gotten pretty large now, guys. That hole's gotten pretty large there and uh, it's going to have a lot of Loctite come out. So we just want literally just a small, just a spit on there. Does that make sense? Just a little bit. Now that's a pretty small Allen there. So he's got to try not get grease from his hands on there. And then if he needs some help here, I can rotate this gear around. Oh, this way a bit. And if those threads are good and the screw's good, it shouldn't take me any effort. Basically, I can, even on my own, I could kind of wiggle that whole assembly together and get that screw to start in there. If it takes any effort, guys, that means there's old Loctite on there or you're crooked or the threads are bad. There's something going on if it takes any effort. And I'll tell you, if you keep going, you're going to ruin parts. That's a steel bolt and a steel shaft, so it's a good chance you're going to ruin both of them. I'm going to go ahead, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to put a tightness on this with the fact that this bolt is is uh, damaged and we have a new one ordered 
I'm gonna go ahead and get it to what I feel is correct without putting a, a torque wrench on there. What was our torque spec? T11. Uh, 35 inch pounds. The other thing is our torque wrench won't go that low. Okay, so the Loctite there is pretty important. Well, we've, we've made it a step further and what we want to do now is we still want to make sure that, go ahead and get in here now. I want to make sure that things are moving and not binding and we're not having any problems, okay? So we're just making sure that something hasn't changed on us, okay? All right, let's flip our cylinder upside down now. Oh, no, you know what? We could go ahead and finish this. We're, uh, we're good here. Let's operate this too and you can see that, that shaft coming in and out there. That's why it was important to lube that. I think it's a countersunk one, isn't it? We have new gaskets for this stuff too, so we'd grab our new gaskets out of our gasket kit. Now, Mason, since you got the manual handy, go ahead and look and see if they're call for Loctite on that. Just go to the front. We'll cheat and use that page I have out. No Loctite, okay. All right, so no Loctite required. That surprises me because we're, we're kind of close on the exhaust side. I thought that there'd be a locking agent used on that. So you good and tight? Okay, let's flip it now. So here's where we got to be careful to uh, make this happen. We know this guy is this one that we've got damaged teeth on, and we know that this had to be this had to be in first to get the um, this had to be in first to pull the rack out, right? So let's lube this up. And this one usually will take a couple of times because what you'll do is you'll put it in and then get the rack in, and you might have to lift up and readjust your teeth on there. Make sense? to get it to line up. Now what I didn't see, and I didn't look at it real close yet, is I was looking for some alignment dots, and I'm not seeing any. So per the manual, see how it says punch mark? Do you see how the tooth is down here? Same thing with that one. I think that's what's gonna be our design on this. We'll take a look at it. So go ahead and, the other thing you can kinda do too is is look at the shape of this, okay, in relationship to how, how the port is, okay? Do you get what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm here, wouldn't you agree that's probably blocking something? Yeah. yeah. Or if I were here? Yep. So let's just see how that looks. I don't know if that's right. I'm gonna let you grab it. And you can just set it down. It can go all the way down. Okay. So ones. Let's uh, do, let's, for us, when we removed it, it was important for us to do this direction, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, we just can lift this up enough, lube this up, and then we'll slide that through. How many people are really liking the guillotine style right now where there's no timing and it's just a spring? Yeah. Super, super fast and easy, right? This works really well, though. We know it's uh, super adjustable, so kind of just, we'll lift that up. And don't worry about timing right now, just shove that baby through. I'll get it pulled through the other side here. So I'm, I'm good here. Okay, so this is the open position. This is what I don't know. What, let's look at the manual and see. Do they tell us to have the shaft in the, on, as far as the alignment? The marked tooth is identified uh, also by its shape. The marked tooth, it says uh, apply high temperature grease to the O-ring. Let's see what they have. Engage the valve pinions with the rod rack so that the punch marks on the pinions are positioned toward the front of the engine. But what we need to know is what, let's see, uh, on that main shaft, we need to know whether that needs to be in the fully open or closed position. That's what we're looking at. I don't see any alignment marks in here. So our big thing is, ooh, there's one right there. Robert, I think you're right. I want to start over. Go ahead and pull this out because, I, was Robert, did you say that? Yeah. Do you see? These, these lines right here and here. See those? That's making sense to look like what we have. We really need to research this and find out. Are you able to, do you see about the middle? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? 
right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. what you aren't seeing is, so what I'm, I'm believing here, and we'll find out once we uh, try it, do you see how we have the half tooth yeah. or the missing tooth? I believe we're gonna line those two up. You know what, guys, too, this is actually right where those damaged teeth are. We might have to deburr an edge. Remember also that that part of the rack Teeth. Okay, I think I'm off a tooth. I'm off one tooth, aren't I? Yep. Okay, good stuff. It's just it's skipping past that tooth. That's why it's binding up in there, Shane. Our rotate. Okay. Yeah, that's the tooth. Yeah, that's the tooth. Let's see what happens from the moved move position. I go the go the wrong way. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know one thing that's making this kind of hard is because it doesn't have its support in there. Yeah. Okay, so what our goal is, is these guys are going to do the same exact thing. Why don't you go ahead and do this one then. Let's lube that up. And then your goal is to line that up with that line. And then the, the other thing you got going on is this one was also engaging with the shaft up here. Remember the second set of, uh, the second part of the rack on this long shaft? The one we inserted first. Now look for your mark, do you see it? Remember the manual told us we had to open this? Okay, so before the gear engages, so once you're just kind of wiggling it down in there, you hold this up, and then we should be able to push this. You gotta get this one to unbind. And look for your alignment mark to be in the middle of that bore right now. Do you see it there, George? Can you see the line? Trying to. Oh, there it is. Pretty small. I don't think we're uh, I don't think we're engaged though. That doesn't engage in that center. Right there. So that's just so we have clearance. Now grab our idler gear. Are we still lined up on our other one here? We are. How easy is it to be off a tooth on this? Very easy. And guys, if this didn't have this chipped teeth over here, this would just be going easier. We're just kind of dragging across that rack and pinion. So we got nothing here. We know that. We sit on the top side. We have no indenta indentations of a shorter gear. So that one looks like that one is just our idler or connector gear. Just gonna wiggle the clearance there. Got it. So before we go, support the sonar for me. Before we go and put those caps on, you remember those could be kind of a challenge to get apart? Yeah. What I wanna try and do is see I, so I, I get them where they open. Now watch what we're gonna do here. You see the valve is open right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this position, okay, the power valve is not open, okay? It, it will swing out. Okay, now I got fully open, and let's relook at those ports. Close. This valve is fully open. The way we have that is on being open, that's closing closing those valves. What's that make you think about that? My initial gut feeling is that's on backwards too. I think we might need to relook and see if that offset tooth needs to be 180 the opposite direction. So the punch marks are supposed to be towards the front of the engine. That's the way we assembled it. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the exhaust side. This is the front here. But, and what's interesting about our timing, our problem with our, our gears here jumping around, is this valve, can you actually see how, if we look in the cylinder here, I don't know if you could see how it's partially open. There, can you see that, guys? Yeah. Now, watch what happens when I look at the other one. Something's not right about our timing, is it? So we definitely got something going on. 
Okay. Well, let's uh, let's look at our alignment here again. Oh, hey! Now that this is fully shut, okay. Now that this is fully shut, this gear is off quite a bit. Compared to this one. And with that, man, that jammed up tooth, this thing is just absolutely, really think that jumped tooth has given us a lot of grief. So we had, we had set, I'm going to try something here. Set that guy like that. Set this one. I'm going to physically just open the hole. Okay. So I'm in the fully open position. Would you agree? Yeah. Do you see how the power valve is open right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now if I look in the cylinder here, do you see how the hole is wide open? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the other side. Wide open? Yep. Closed. Right? Yep. Closed. So our biggest problem is those teeth, but now that we now that we see this, now we can go back and look at our alignment here. And you'll notice that the quote unquote punch marks are off to the side. Let's see if we can't see anything in our uh, textbook here. We're going to we're gonna we're gonna look in this a little more because we're just not quite sure with this not being our exact manual to see what this looks like. Last steps we do is we lubricate these up, put these in position, put our covers back on, and then we'd be able to go back on the motorcycle. But you have an idea that uh, of the power valve having to have alignment? Yep. 